Hi, welcome to this episode of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about uh, how Big IP plugs into the public cloud. And so, before we, uh, you know, start diagramming and, and look at how, uh, you know, architecturally it fits, I wanted to back up a little bit and just kind of talk about the different uh, definitions of of how people might perceive cloud. And so, you know, there's the concept of, of just virtualization, and that's taking Big IP, which you know we have appliances for, we have chassis for in the Viprion form, but then there's the Big IP Virtual Edition. And so when you're virtualizing something, you know literally you're creating something virtual uh, rather than an actual thing. And so you're taking hardware and you're carving up some of those hardware resources for um, you know memory, CPU, disk, networking, all of that is being virtualized with a hypervisor. And so you can virtualize Big IP and, 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 you know, that's cloud in its most basic form is, is, is virtualization. And then you have the automation piece, which is, okay, I have to configure this big IP and maybe I have to configure 50 of them, but I really don't want to have to manually set a host name and manually define these VLANs and these self IPs and these pools and these I rules. And so you can automate all of those, those uh, processes. And that's, that's really, you know, literally automation is the use of a control system uh, for operating applications with minimal or re reduced human intervention. So, uh, you know, we're going to automate that. And that, that's really just to take the menial tasks away. Because once you have a process, once you know I need this um, VLAN, this self-IP, this, um, you know, these routes, and, and so on, uh, you can physically configure those. And, and some people enjoy that. Some people like the... Uh, the process of, of configuring objects. Um, I, I like it to get comfortable, so my, my recommendation is always build it first from scratch, and then once you know how to build it from scratch, automate the process. So, you know, there's the first two spots, virtualization and automation. Now let's talk about orchestration. And if you think of a choir or, or a, you know, an orchestra, you have a conductor, and so you have all these individual instrumentalists playing their own individual uh, parts or singing their own individual um, parts as well. And so the conductor is orchestrating everyone together. It's um, literally planning or coordination of elements of a situation to produce a de desired effect. For a choir or a band it's, or an orchestra, it's to make beautiful music in a lot of different parts with a lot of different moving pieces. If everybody kind of did their own thing, um, well, I'm sure you guys have been to a sixth grade band concert. It's not so good. Um, so orchestration is the, um, you know, the part of, of bringing all of that stuff together. So if you look at some of the orchestration tools out there, um, Puppet and Chef and Ansible, uh, our own iWorkflow, you have these tools that will, um, that will take uh, automation and it automates the automation. And so it, it, it puts workflows together to assure that you can build out a system or a system of systems or, you know, an application. And so... All these tools go about things a little differently. Uh, Puppet and Chef have agents that install on these systems. Ansible uses SSH. iWorkflow uses an API. And so there's, there's all kinds of different methodology for using the orchestra or implementing the orchestration. Uh, but you know, the, all the tools, the goal is the same. And so let's get into uh, what the, uh, the public clouds uh, that we actually support and so if you, you look at public cloud, we have, um, you know, Amazon Web Services, and then we have Azure, and then we have the Google Cloud. Now there's other clouds that you can use publicly uh, that use other technologies like VMware and, uh, and OpenStack, and we'll talk about those later. Um, but the, uh, the actual public cloud uh, instances that we support are, are these three. And so, um, you know, I could draw up an individual diagram for all three of these, but it, it looks very much the same in the way that they're deployed. And you can do multi-NIC or single-NIC. We're going to talk about the single-NIC deployment uh, here. But you start with the world, and, and then you come into your little virtual data center here. And in the virtual data center, in all three of the solutions, you have, you know, this commodity load balancing 
And so, and you don't need this, like if you, if you do a single, a single VE deployment, you don't need even that step. But if you're going to do um, uh, separated by availability zones, then you'll want the, um, you know, Elastic Load Balancer in Amazon or the, you know, the Azure Load Balancer there, uh, Google Load Balancer in Google and so on. But I'm going to show, you know, what, you know, this is an availability zone um, and then another availability zone. So, you know, of course, in Amazon, it calls them availability zones. In, um, in Azure, uh, they call them uh, uh, resource availability zones, I think. And then, you know, I don't think Google calls them anything. It's just, uh, you know, a, a particular zone that you deploy your VE in. Um, but once you come through, you have your VE that exists in each availability zone. And you don't do HA in this instance. So, you know, you can connect through here, and this is a, a virtual connect through. And then, of course, once you come through the VE area, this is kind of your, your infrastructure tier, and then that comes back into this, uh, this, this web tier. And so this web tier may be deployed across availability zones. It, it may not be. You know, that, that's up to you. But as far as the VE is concerned, we have an availability zone here and an availability zone here. And so, uh, you know, you do set up config syncing between these. So even though they're in separate availability zones, in order for the config syncing to work, the host names need to be unique between the two. Um, but really, that, that's kind of it. Um, single NIC solution uh, will support a backend web tier. You know, your um, uh, public access into this tier. Now, because this isn't true HA, if this goes away, he's still going to be able to handle traffic, but you might have uh, some services that, that go away for a second. So the higher level protocols like HTTP will need to heal themselves or, you know, you um, uh, reload and, and try again. So it's not true HA. With true HA, you do need uh, multi-NIC solutions and some of the uh, cloud environments support that and some of them don't. And, uh, you know, I'll link all the specific information for each of these clouds in the, the bottom of this video. So very, very brief overview about how Big IP fits into the environment in all these different clouds. A use case that is really compelling and is just kind of opens up the, um, you know, the possibilities for cloud is uh, what we use for our agility labs. And if you haven't signed up for agility yet, get out there, sign up. It's going to be great this year. We have a lot of technical sessions, including uh, some, some really great cloud sessions. And so, but what we use for our, our lab sessions is um, uh, the Revelo systems. And what they do, because, uh, you know, all these underlying virtual machines in Amazon, Azure, and Google, they're all a little different. Um, and so what Revelo does is it has this HVX hypervisor. And what it does is like if you're familiar with GRE, um, the uh, tunneling, you can encapsulate an IP packet. So you have a IP packet and it gets encapsulated with GRE. And so you can tunnel that IP. Well, HVX is very similar. It encapsulates your virtual machines. So you can, in Revelo, build out a architecture, say, I want a Windows client, I want a Linux client, and I want a HA pair. Um, let's just say we just want a single big IP. Um, so I'll scratch that out. So we have our LTM, and then I have a set of um, Ubuntu servers back here. And so I can set this infrastructure up in what Ravello calls a blueprint. And so once I have configured this with their, um, you know, uh, say this is all in VMware. So I have created all of these templates in VMware um, in a Ravello blueprint. Ravello, okay. So what they will do is then all of these VMs will be encapsulated on this HVX hypervisor. And so from there, 
with your blueprint, you can click go one time or 50 times and it will build this exact system however many times you want in your choice of clouds, which is really powerful because you know one of the biggest things that we've had trouble with years back is how do you actually set up the lab infrastructure in a way that is uh, reliable and, um, and, and easy. And, and this makes it incredibly simple. Once you've got your blueprint done and you've got all your configurations set up the way you want to, it's save the blueprint and then click go. And you can choose your, um, you know, your cloud based on you know, performance or in cost savings uh, and all that. And then it'll just uh, click go and, and it builds it. So that's an incredible use case for um, the orchestration of uh, deploying Big IP in uh, public cloud. So hopefully this has been instructive. Obviously this is one of a thousand use cases for why uh, deploying Big IP in a, in a cloud of any kind, but uh, specifically today talking about um, public clouds is useful. So uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you out there in the community.